We're in the Mojave tonight. Welcome to fabulous Las Vegas, where the Utah State Aggies have only ever won twice. Although they bring Brock Miller and a quintet of double figure scorers against the interior presence of Mbake Young. He's averaging a double double in January. Aggies and Rebels next. Las Vegas, Nevada, a couple of miles off the strip. The UNLV running Rebels and Utah State Aggies inside the Thomas and Mack Center. The Mountain West trying to get four teams into the NCAA tournament this year. The Aggies at the top of that list. Boise State as well, 9-0, number one in the league right now. Utah State, Boise have not yet played. Although Utah State and Colorado State, they played last week. He's Steve Wolf, the former Xavier Musketeer. Joel Gadeck, glad to have you along with us. Colorado State ruined our party, Steve. They snapped the 11-game win streak for the Aggies, but you're not worried, are you? Well, I think it's it's a really important game for them to snap back into shape, but you're, you're two teams, one has been on a string of, of wins, and then you have UNLV that's only played, you know, a handful of games. So it's going to be an interesting matchup tonight. Utah State has one of the best players, not just in the Mountain West, but maybe one of the best players in the country that you've never heard of. Tell us why Nimi Keda has your eye. Well, because he influences everything that goes on the court. He is a great offensive player. He's around the hoop all the time. But I think more importantly, he does a super job on the defensive end. He controls the glass. You know, he's a rim protector. He starts their offense from his defense, and he's probably the best player in the conference and one of the best players in the country. UNLV has lost the straw that stirs its drink, though. Marvin Coleman is out for the season with a leg injury. So a couple of guys have to pick up the slack. Who's on your eye? Well, now that Coleman's out, I think you're going to have to look at David Jenkins, who's you know played the backup point guard, 20 uh, assists, 20 turnovers. He's got to get better there. But the guy that really stirs a drink for UNLV is Bryce Hamilton. Uh, he's an outstanding scorer. Uh, he was a first-team Mountain West pick last year. He has to have a great game this evening for them to pull off this win. It's UNLV. It is Utah State. The Aggies have won in the desert twice, ever. We'll tip it up next, Aggies and Rebels on CBS Sports Network. The only two years Utah State has come to the desert and knocked off the running Rebels. Trying to do it again tonight. We talked about Kata off the top. Brock Miller is the sharpshooter. Marco Anthony, the transfer from Virginia. Hamilton and Jenkins get all the attention, but Caleb Grill, transfer from Iowa State, hit seven threes, Steve, against Alabama. There is Nimi Kata. Bryce Hamilton, the younger brother of the former Buffalo star. Played in the NCAA tournament in 2016. To Utah State basketball to begin things here in the desert. Aggies averaging 76 points per game against a UNLV defense, third in field goal percentage D in the Mountain West. Yeah, they struggled against Colorado State shooting the basketball, so it'll be interesting how they come out of the gates and right off the bat, knocking down the three ball. Early three drops down for Marco Anthony. Utah State more than capable from behind the arc, 35% to upper half teams from behind the line in the Missouri, in the, uh, the Mountain West part. Just saw the Missouri event. Big win for Loyola tonight. Step out, Gian, and it's rebounded by Anthony. First bucket, first board. Uh, the teams are very similar in the fact they do like to shoot the three ball, but they like to get it out and run, too. Have to get that ball up and down, but you got to get the, the rebounds. You got to win the defensive glass. Being the three around and out. Two possessions down, Steve. Utah State does have a bucket, but Kata has not touched the ball. Good defense by UNLV? Well, I think it's good defense by UNLV, but I think you have to. Uh, if you're the Aggies, get the ball inside, and he has to have touches because he's a dominating force in that lane. Open look for Grill in the corner. That three drops down. We mentioned it right off the top. Excuse me, that's Moses Wood in the corner with the triple. 
Well, this is a team that, that you know, comes down the court and looking for the three ball. Uh, they're the running Rebels. They're not going to sit there and have that half-court offense. They like to get it up and down. One out of every two shots for UNLV comes from behind the arc. There's the first touch for Kada, and he's got to catch it three blocks in from the ocean, way outside the lane. Back his way down against Jong, and the turnaround's well short. Got his own board right back up, and he finishes. That, Steve, is why he's so dangerous. Averages nearly 10 boards a game. Well, he was 218 pounds when he came to Utah State, and he is now a consistent 235. And the way he ripped that rebound down and took the ball away from the opponent shows how much he's improved physically. I loaded Jung, and he stuck the ball up there. The thing for Kada, he went to the NBA Combine after declaring following his freshman season at 218. Craig Smith told us the thing NBA scouts told him, you've got to get bigger, and it's not just weight but it's strength weight, it was muscle weight, so that he can actually hold his own and not be pushed around down on the block. He was the only player on the team that stayed all summer in Logan to work on his game. You know, he wanted to go back and see his mom and his family, but he stayed there and got stronger and really was dedicated to working with the trainers to get stronger. David Jenkins off the end out of bounds, knocks down his first bucket. Found a gym that was open, Nimi Kata did. They were slim pickings during quarantine, during the COVID summer of 2020. But he worked on his core, first and foremost. Wooster tried to find him on the dump down. Instead, here's the baseline drive in the dish. That turns into a turnover. Chance to get out and run here for the Rebels. Deep one for Wood. Moses Wood is short. And that's out of bounds. TJ Otzelberger coming from South Dakota State formerly coached against Craig Smith when he was at South Dakota. So these two coaches know each other quite well from the Summit League. Um, Butch Otzberger basically wants his guys to score, and they want to shrink the court for Kada. They want to shrink the emphasis early. They want to shrink that court defensively, but right there, they, they have to make sure they keep Kada out of the paint. They cannot allow him to get inside the restricted area. He's gonna go, he's gonna go to town on you. Baseline dump down, another good find. How about Moses Wood here early? Steve, he averages five points. He has five already. Hamilton with the find. You know, when you lose a guy uh, to an injury like Coleman, somebody else has to pick up the slack. And you know the two big guys, Jenkins and, and Hamilton, are gonna pick it up, but Woods is bringing it this, afternoon, this evening. Anthony with the drive straight to the bucket. Blake Hamilton was Bryce Hamilton's brother, played kind of the point forward spot at Buffalo for Bobby Hurley several years ago. Averaged four assists a game as a senior on an NCAA tournament team, so it's kind of in the blood. There's another nice dump down to Jung, tries the one more. Shot clock at 10, Hamilton the three. That's short, rebounded. Good defense extension by Utah State, getting in Hamilton's face. Anthony into Hamilton, step back, no, rebounded by Grill. We have some tempo in the desert. Hamilton trying to be a creator and a little too out of control. That is a charge and the first foul of the game. Kata, you don't need to foul. Tell you what, Kata is the real deal. If you let him get the ball inside, that close to the rim, you can just kiss his sneakers goodbye. College basketball on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by AT&T 5G. Fast, reliable, secure. By GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. And by KitKat. Have a break. Have a KitKat. Utah State coming into UNLV's house trying to win 12 of its last 13 games. Had an 11-game win streak snapped by Colorado State. Steve, it turned the ball over too much. You've got your eyes there tonight, no? Well, I think Coach Smith was uh, adamant about how they have to take care of the basketball, uh, you know, limit their turnovers, but they also have to make sure they don't forget about getting the ball inside to the big fellas. They have two seven-footers. They have to, you know, feed the post. You know, UNLV is going to keep an eye on Kata. Kata's the, the number one 
guy that can dominate them. And they have to play physical, too, which means that they have to rebound the ball so they can get it out, and they have to make sure they body Kata. He cannot get in the restricted area in the paint. Kata already has an offensive rebound. It led directly to a putback. Utah State plus two on the boards through the first, what a lot of coaches refer to as the first four-minute war, breaking this game down into its pieces. Kick out to Anderson, Alfonso Anderson in off the bench. She misses the three. Utah State one of three from behind the line, four for its first eight from the field. UNLV three for its first seven, another dump down to Joan. That stays here. Steve, they've made a concerted effort to get it to their answer to Utah State's Kata. Well, and you saw right there, Kata has got that long wingspan. He's able to tip the ball out of bounds. It's very hard to feed the post. You know, you, even though you have, they have the big guy in Bakke Jong down low, it's really hard to get him the ball. Nick Blake in off the bench. The freshman from Vegas missed it, and the rebound down to Anthony. Steven Ashworth, the freshman out of Alpine, Utah, is in for the first time. The point guard is three and blue at the top of your screen. And Anthony draws a foul. The Virginia transfer headed to the free throw line. Utah State has been the aggressor here early. That's the first on Grill. Well, good dribble drive to the basket. And you'll see the ticky-tack foul. You have to keep your hand out of there. You know, that's a Grill has to push him back to the middle. And, and there is a lot of aggression on the offensive end by Utah State. They're the biggest team in the conference. And they're also very skilled. They're one of the biggest teams in the country. First free throw good for Anthony. UNLV brings in Eduardo Del Cadilla, who we were told by TJ Altselberger needs to be the physical enforcer for UNLV. Utah State has three seven-footers on its roster. It's one of only three teams in the country that can boast that. Two for two at the line. And even their small guys are big. Marco Anthony's 230 pounds. He's a bowling ball of a guard. But you, you can have big guys, but they're ineffective. These big guys, you know, you, you have uh, a seven-footer on the court, and then you have Dorius, who's seven-foot, coming in off the bench for Utah State, and they're highly effective. Rebound down to Kata. He boxed everyone out just by being there. Anderson looking into Kata. Good job by UNLV. They're forcing the catch out wide. But Kata just the back down, the turnaround, and he can almost touch the rim with his arms from out there, but he does miss. You hit the nail on the head. He was too far out. That's one of those maybe you pass and reset to get the ball in the lane. Moving screen called against the running reps. Now watch when, where, where Kata's getting the ball. He's outside of the block, and then he's got to make some moves to try to get in closer. That's good physical defense. The problem, though, is he catches it there, Steve. He's still one step out of the paint, where most people would need to take two or three. But I think that if he gets it and has to make a dribble, you're upsetting his routine. You, he can usually take it from the one step and throw it down and lay it in. Well, there it is. He fumbles it away at the free throw line. Out in transition. He still gets the block. Kata got back on defense. Stuck Hamilton to the backboard. Second chance for UNLV is a long three. Out running Anthony. Good advance pass. Anderson in traffic. No. And it's rebounded by Moses Wood. Running Rebs down four. Well, well that's why Kata's so important. He can get up and down the court. And when he doesn't play the whole game against Colorado State, it really hurt their the defensive end because they weren't able to, to stop Colorado State and they couldn't score at the other end because they weren't getting the ball inside. Kata was in foul trouble over the weekend against the Rams. Played only 10 minutes in the second half, and that's when Colorado State sealed the deal. There's Kata going to work on the block. He has six of his team's first 13. But he's almost make, even with UNLV himself. You're right, Joel. They're making it harder on him. That was a good move in using the basket to bail him out, the, the backboard to bail him out a little bit. Good ball movement gets Hamilton a look from three. That's quintessential what UNLV wants tonight. TJ Otzelberger, their head coach, told us we need to get the ball moving. And with their point guard, Marvin Coleman, out, that's key tonight. And I think that Ham Hamilton's the second leading scorer in this conference, and he's a, obviously a perennial Mountain West first teamer. Uh, and, and they have to get him in the flow of the game, maybe some inside out passing. It's well for his first now four. Kata again the contest. Ashworth. 
Here's Anthony on the block. Good movement for Utah State. Anderson can't pay it off. Another offensive rebound. Anthony back to the rim. It's been all Anthony and Kata, quite literally. The only two men to score in blue, 23 and 44. And that whole fast break was started by Kata's block. Good defense. It really intimidates you when you get in the paint like that. How about that, though? Another triple at the top of the key. He's deep down your scouting report, but Moses Wood making a difference. He's got eight points. He only averages five. There's a steal for UNLV and a foul out of frustration in transition. Ashworth and Anthony were both in there. We've got ourselves a game despite the Aggies' early five. Well, Kata does it on the defensive end, but he also up and under on the offensive end. And, but the three ball is very, very been important. Moses Woods for three, down by two. Tight game, first quarter done in the desert, Utah State and UNLV in what's been a better year for the Mountain West. It's been eight years since the Mountain West had five teams in the NCAA tournament. Steve, this could be the year they get four. Well, uh, Boise is really playing well. They lost their first game against a very, very good top 15 Houston team. And obviously, Utah State had their 11-game win streak. But how about Colorado State? You always look for San Diego State to be in there, but Colorado State playing pretty well. Trivia time for you. 2013, the last time that four teams, there were five from the Mountain West, made it to the NCAA tournament. Do you know who won games in the tournament that year? San Diego State. That was one. Um, UNLV. It was the Colorado State Rams. Oh, okay. UNLV did make it that year, though. The last time the running Rams were in the field of 68. They've got the basketball here. 11-19 to go in the first half, and loose fingers, that is turnover number three. Utah State's entire offense has run through Kata and Anthony. All 15 points for the Aggies. And both of them are on the bench right now. So who's gonna step up at this juncture? Trevin Dorius, the seven-footer, posting up. Instead, it's a three up top that goes long. Rebound down to the running Rebs, and a foul in transit. No, that's a travel. Turnover on Jenkins. Kata's three for his first five. Anthony, three for his first four. Well, Steve, what happens as a player? You've got two guys so dominant early. Everyone else now has to step up. Well, uh, Wooster was right wide open for that three, and this is a freshman who's playing like an upperclassman. He needs to knock that down. He's not a great three-point shooter, but he's capable. Bean is a more than capable three-point shooter, but he misses that one. Rebound again to the Rebs. We talked about them playing without their point guard, Marvin Coleman. He's out for the season with a stress fracture in his right leg. Five assists, though, on five main buckets. They have shared the ball phenomenally. David Jenkins told us they've had good practices doing that. Inside, Jung finishes. We have a tie game. You saw how easy that was to get the ball in there with Kata out. Now, you have another seven-footer, but he's not able to defend as well as Kata does on that other end of the court and uh, right now while well, he, he's sitting on the bench i would try to pack the ball inside every time and bakke jong is more than capable of scoring when he's that close to the, the bucket he is very strong seven footer and he's athletic he's almost slighted steve you know jenkins told us all the talk about kata we've got a bucket we like our guy inside well i mean Kate is that good that, as you see the block there, I mean, that big seven foot going out on the perimeter, but yeah. Good I advance mean, pass. How about Bean? Get out and run. That's a defense right there. Block shot. A block at the rim. That time was a block on the three point jump shot that led to the fast break by Utah State. Aggie's no joke on defense. The national median score for a game, 72 points. Here's a three for Nick Blake. Rebounded by Ashworth. 
prior to their loss against Colorado State, they had held seven consecutive teams under 60. Jumper being followed in, saved it. Dorius. Rotation to Ashworth, one more to the corner. Wooster short on the three. Offensive rebounding, though, keeping Utah State with opportunities. That was their fourth. You talk about Utah State's defense. Dorius going out and blocking and starting the fast break, getting the easy two on the other end. It's one of the staples for the Aggies. You see Ashworth going to the bench. He struggled in the last game against Colorado State, but he's come out with a fresh start here tonight. Has defended better as his freshman season's going along. It all starts with defense for Utah State, everything. Kata back in the game. The 23 and blue. Anthony gets a hand on the ball. Eight seconds to shoot. Now you talk about UNLV and the coaches really the state, you know, want this team, you know, to, to embrace. Three is good for UNLV. That's another assisted bucket too. David Jenkins, the runner to red, six buckets, now seven, all of them assisted. That's out of bounds. And another turnover, five for the Aggies. Steve, you said it off the top. They have to eliminate losing plays, is what Craig Smith told us. Like that. Well, the live ball turnovers hurt you. That time right there, you know, it wasn't a live ball, so it didn't end up in a fast break, but you have to take care of the ball in the half court. You cannot match turnover for turnover with a team like UNLV, because they're going to end up beating you. Good dump down to Jung. He just couldn't hang on to it. That's a dead ball turnover for UNLV. It's their fifth, but Jenkins keeping his team in it. You gotta have the outside scoring. Jenkins able to do it, playing that backup point guard role. UNLV counting by threes here early, Steve. They've got the lead midway through the first. Well, and Utah State's getting the ball inside and getting the points in the paint, but Utah State's been efficient. Knocking the three ball down, but you know, was, uh, when we were on our call with Coach Otzenberger, he basically said, you know, we want free throws, we want layups, we want threes, but we need a lot more free throws than we're getting. They're not going to get those threes shooting the uh, free throws, getting the shooting the three ball. They have to get the ball inside and be physical. I know you're playing against one of the best shot blockers in the country. You have to go inside, maybe try to get him in foul trouble. You got to be a little bit more physical. Points in the paint heavily favoring. Nimi Keita and Utah State. Uh, UNLV, one out of every two shots this season comes from three. So this is not a surprise, but yeah, you're right. TJ Altsberger did tell us we need to attack inside. We need to shoot more free throws. They shoot the fewest free throws in the Mountain West, among the fewest in the country. They are zero for zero from the line tonight. Well, but they lead. You know, the coaches always say you live and die by the three. Brock Miller's going to try, and he gets himself to the free throw line from behind the arc. And that's important for Brock Miller. I mean, he, he really struggled against Colorado State. He's four for ten from behind the arc. But this time, he gets out over there and grill with a foul on a three. You never foul the jump shooter. I mean, that's a, a cardinal sin right there. All right. I, I know everybody says that. Why does it still happen? Well, I think momentum, that was a, it was seriously a, a great pick. And Grill came off the pick and, and was already there. I mean, the momentum takes you into it. Brock Miller with the four-point play. Guy shoots 42% from behind the line. Brock Miller once took 19 threes in a game. It's a school record at Utah State. You think he's, you think he's got the green light? Uh, it's a very green light. <laughs> he's also made seven in a game. So he's got his name plastered all over the record books. Nice pass inside to Jung. Good double team, though. Tip back, Moses Wood. There's points in the paint. That's what you wanted to see. Well, Wooster came over from the weak side, made a really good attempt. And the big fella just takes a strong to the basket. They got to do more of that on the inside. Kata misses. Rebound, Anderson, no. Loose ball back to Kata. Shot clock resets, gets a great look from three. Wooster's long. Kata again. 
His arms are huge. I just pad the stats right now. <laughs> three around and down. Offensive rebounds, three on that possession, and Marco Anthony has 12 first half points. Another recipient of great hustle by Kata. The offensive rebounding is eight to two. Three to answer though for UNLV, and a whistle on that side. Brock Miller giveth and taketh Jenkins to the line. We can say the same thing. Miller trying to go on the side of him and just momentum takes him straight in there. And you know, you, you, it really hurts when you have a wide open shot like that. You got to take your chances. You can't foul him. David Jenkins is a transfer from South Dakota State where he played for TJ Anselberger. He was recruited out of prep school. Otzelberger drove seven hours each way to recruit Jenkins. That loyalty stuck in his mind because when he transferred from South Dakota State, he had offers from Gonzaga, Oregon, UCLA, what Jenkins called a dream list of schools, stuck with the guy that believed in him. What, that boy stays here. And, and Co Coach Otzelberger did a really smart thing. He went after him and knew how good he was before he became a late bloomer. I mean, right. he was not as good as he is now when he was recruited to South, South Dakota State. I think you, you reward loyalty. You gotta give Jenkins credit for that. Pick and roll, nice drive to the bucket. Count that for Worcester. They took away the dish to Kato, so the freshman, I got this. It's a good play by Worcester. He's missed a couple threes. He's gotta get physical in the paint. Blake, a three in response. His first points, the freshman of the year preseason in the Mountain West. UNLV is punched back in front by a point. Well, now you see UNLV going to the zone. Remember, Colorado State at the seven minute mark of the second half decided to go zone when Cato was out of the game and, and the Aggies were not shooting the ball well. So trying to see what they can get out of it here. There's what we haven't seen yet though from Cato, Steve. That's his passing ability. First assist from the big guy. You can double him, he'll find the open man. And how about the freshman moving without the basketball? It's back-to-back -back layups for Wooster. Blake over to Jenkins rising in front of Miller. Rebound and Bakke blocked. Trying to go to town against the former defensive player of the year and the little reverse will do the trick. Well, talk about persistence. You know, as Jenkins said, we believe in our guy. And that is a very strong move after getting swatted. He just used the backboard as a pick to get over there and use it at the easy layup. Well, they made Kata dribble. Turnover number six for Utah State. Pull up, Hamilton missed. Jung the rebound, and he's fouled. Well, Jung getting the offensive rebound. Kata not boxing out, but Kata with those long arms able to block it. But watch how Jung goes on the other side of the rim and uses it like a pick to get the layup. Shot blocker awareness. Know where you are, know where he is. Well, Jung doesn't look like he's intimidated, I'll tell you that. Nimi Kata goes to the bench. Shot clock and reset to 20 here for UNLV. Drive to the bucket, left-handed layup doesn't drop. Bryce Hamilton does, and he goes to the free throw line. Good dribble drive to the basket. Not settling for the three, but when you shoot the ball so well, like Hamilton does, he's able to get to the rim. It's four fouls on Utah State. Coming up next here on CBS Sports Network. Course record. Get your golf game in tow. It is course record on CBS Sports Network. Utah State has got to get something going from behind the arc. That's part of their game. They're struggling, but they're getting stuff in the paint. They just need to have somebody step up and shoot a three and knock it down. Three-point game inside Utah State. Johnson, Moses Wood. 
Looks for the trailer. Here's Hamilton with the loose handles. And a held ball to get us to the under four. Utah State down three on the road. UNLV making it rain from behind the arc. It's 41 degrees in Las Vegas tonight. They are expecting snow flurries. That is not what we were promised, Steve Wolf. <laughs> Coming up on AT&T, 5G at the half. Brent Stover, Gary Parrish will get you caught up on all the scores, highlights, and the latest news in college basketball today. That is all coming up on AT&T 5G at the half. Two teams trying to make it to the NCAA tournament here, Utah State, UNLV. These are 10 teams that we expect to see in the mix. Michigan took its first loss. They are on pause now, though, for two weeks as an athletic department because of positive tests for the new strain of COVID-19. How about Alabama? Nate Oates, the job that he has done with that team. Well, he's done a great job. I mean, they're strong, but you look at Texas Tech, they're down right now to West Virginia. As you see that, uh, Gary Parrish, he might have writer's cramp from uh, all the changes he had to make this week. I mean, this top 25 is just fluctuating daily. UVA making a reemergence in the top 25 in one in recent weeks. Got an air ball three by Anthony. Three-point shooting has been the story, at least for UNLV. Roman Rebs have knocked down six from behind the arc. Three of 11 for Utah State. Buster, Buster. Hamilton kicks out of the double team. Wood rising, missed his third three of the day. And we've got a foul hip check. That's on the Italian Del Cadia. That's his yeah, first. Right now, Utah State, their they're, they're offense in the half court, they're getting buckets in the paint. They're winning that battle, you know, but they have to be able to knock down a three, especially when you're playing a team like UNLV. You gotta get somebody, maybe some inside out action. Kata, when he gets double teamed, looking cross, cross court to get somebody a jump shot. You got good three point shooters on this Utah State team. There's a steal though. Without numbers, Jung gave it up. Step in, Jenkins, that's an 18-footer. 10 watch, points for David Jenkins. When you watch Jenkins shoot, Joel, it looks like he's off balance, and it's always a tough shot, but he's got great shoulder squaring up and knocks it down. Anthony went up in traffic, got it back, great find. Justin Bean, I don't know how Marco Anthony kept that whole thing alive. But tip your cap to the junior. Marco Anthony's playing a solid first half. 12 points. He's rebounding the basketball. He's got six rebounds and another assist on that last play. UNLV has the lead, though. 10 assists on its 12 main buckets. Jump. He walked. Oh, look at this thing. Now the Virginia transfer hustling. He learned something from Tony Bennett. And now he's learning a lot more from Craig Smith. That was a beautiful pass inside to Bean, but he had to get the rebound and, and locate Bean. Anthony played on that Virginia team that won the national championship. Not a lot in the NCAA tournament, though. He played just one minute. There's an interception inside to Nick Blake. Loving the opportunity that Anthony has in the Mountain West. That's saved. And going back to the Aggies. Well, the last pass inside to Kata. Well, that was a great play by Blake coming across from the weak side to steal it. Wooster's got to realize that they're going to double team in the paint every time Kata has the ball or is near the ball. There's the pick and roll with Kata. Being the kick. They let him play on. The three is short for Anthony. Craig Smith will take the opportunity to sub. Now, what, the, what a job Craig Smith has done since coming to Utah State. I mean, this is Did a I call guy. Him Craig Anthony, by the way. No, Marco okay. Anthony. Yeah, you know, they, they run together. Yeah. I'm sorry, Craig Smith. Yeah, 
Well, Craig's been uh, just phenomenal. This is a defensive-minded coach and really had a spend, spent a lot of time with him in Jamaica uh, last year when uh, he was playing in the tournament out there. They won't let you qualify that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They just went well, to Jamaica, yeah. No, it was his mom and dad had their 50th wedding anniversary out there. It was a great time. He's a uh, really gets a lot out of the guys he coaches and and he's a player's coach, you know, and, and he's very fundamental and disciplined. He always used to, says when he's talking about his motto, he goes, we need to be brilliant in the basics. You know, they give players a lot of freedom and a lot of opportunities to play. Moving screen on Jung, his foul, his first Utah State basketball with 90 seconds to go in the half. Three-point lead for UNLV, 90 seconds thereabouts to go here in the first half. It is a Utah State basketball, though. Aggies only shooting 38% here in the first half. Good job defensively by the home squad. Inside, Bearstow, the Australian with his first action. Little duck in. So Craig Smith goes to the bench here, makes it a one-point game. What's allowed UNLV, though, to have the success that it has had offensively against the best defense in the Mountain West? There was a three, knocked in, UNLV with a triple. The, the tail of the tape right now. U Utah State is not able to hit the ball, shoot the ball from behind the arc. They're only getting twos while U UNLV's getting threes. Seven of 15 from behind the arc in the first half. Bean didn't want to shoot it into Kata. Kata, look at that kick. Bearstow fell, shot clock at two. Bean rising, yes, at the horn. That's Justin Bean. Good recognition by Bean. Uh, did a smart job looking at the shot clock. Knew how much time was left on the clock. Four seconds to go in the half. Pull up. That's it again. An eighth three of the first half. How about Bryce Hamilton and the UNLV running Rebels? Just pull up at the buzzer. Send me to halftime. Utah State dominating in the paint, but it's the running Rebs getting out in transition and rocking from behind the arc, looking for a big win on the home boards.